So, whoever wrote the lyrics for the theme song for this movie, family is family. Family. Oh, give that person a raise, okay? Their wages need to go up like that because they are a genius of lyrical ability. What's up boys and girls on YouTube? So today in this video, I'm gonna be reviewing the recently released Christian comedy movie, Family Camp, which is a movie about a, a family that goes to family camp. This, uh, this is gonna be in the top 10 list of most original movie titles of all time. And I can imagine the marketing meeting, everyone coming together, and, and I imagine they're asking, well, you know, we're trying to come up with a title for the movie. Well, what's it about? It's about a family that goes to family camp. We'll just call it family camp. <gasps> Oh my goodness, you're a genius. That's why we pay you the big bucks. We're changing yurts right now. <laughs> Say what you will about this movie, it turned me into an aspiring harmonica player. <laughs> That's not supposed to sound like that, is it? In a nutshell, I would say I'm rather disappointed with this movie. With the big titles and names that were behind it, you, you expect a certain standard of quality. It's great in some regards, great cinematography, it's a very comp competently done movie. It's even enjoyable to regards, but I was disappointed because at the end of the day, when I review movies, I'm focusing on, the at the end of the day, the storytelling. And, and I was just pretty disappointed with the storytelling. And, and the, this is supposed to be a comedy movie. The comedy was honestly just kind of bad. I mean, there were some moments where I genuinely laughed, but it's just the comedy more than anything else was kind of just slapstick. It was very rudimentary. It, it's kind of an unprocessed humor where it's almost like they tried too hard or they didn't try hard enough, depending on how you look at it. So there's like this one line in the movie that I think gives a pretty good summary of what to expect with the comedy in this movie. The only thing that is clear to me is how clueless you actually are. I mean, you can't be normal for one minute, can you? Everything that comes out of your mouth causes every bit of me to cringe. It's like, it's like your head is just a, uh, a giant cheese grater and I'm lactose intolerant. And you open up your mouth and just grade A cheddar just starts coming out. It's just uh, uh, uh. So yeah, kind of disappointed, but uh, to, to meet the main character, we start out the movie with meeting Tom, Tommy Ackerman, who is apparently an expectant mother. I don't understand exactly how that works, but it's 2022, so I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm not on board with that stuff. But not only is Tommy Ackerman an expectant mother, he's kind of a simp. I'm sorry, I was late. Again. Okay. What, what do I gotta do to make it up to you? But his wife feels like it would be really good for the family if they went to this family camp the church is hosting. But you never would have guessed that from the movie title. Yeah, this is already turning out to be very stereotypical. Let's get one thing straight. There's absolutely no way that I'm ever going to. So she talks him into going to the family camp. And when they get there, they end up having to share a yurt with another family called the Sanders family, which is very much not your conventional family. So the father in the Sanders family, his name is Eddie Sanders. His favorite word is, is bucko. He says it like 500 times. Bucko, bucko, bucko. But uh, he's a very interesting character. In my opinion, he's kind of an example of some over the top acting. Maybe this is what he really sounds like in real life, but his acting just feels very unnatural. Most of the actors in the movie are great. I mean, like the Tommy Ackerman, he's, a, he, he's, he's not a very original or even so much a likable character. He's just kind of your average Joe. But this other guy just feels very much almost like a forced persona. But uh, his family is a very unique and different kind of family. You are gonna wanna hot compress this and massage this a little later. Might I say, professionally speaking, of course, your wife has a lovely neck. Oh. Goose-like. <laughs> you don't get your hands on a neck like that every day. <laughs> it's such an awkward line of dialogue. Now would you look at that beautiful yurt? Oh, uh, would you look at that? Put that Just on. look at that. But despite them being a very different and honestly weird kind of family, Tommy kind of envies them to an extent because they very much on the outside look like an idealistic family. They seem to love each other, be there for each other. I mean, for crying out loud, Eddie prays over his kids every night, even if those prayers are kind of weird. 
And Lord, thank you for our children. May their lives be a sweet fragrance unto you, Lord. Yeah, what smells like corn nuts in here? That's my feet. Tommy would never admit it, but he kind of envies the family and even in some cases tries to emulate them. God, uh, we thank you for Jesus because mm -hmm, he's, he's great. I mean, you know. I mean, you know that, right? I mean, you're great too. And so when Eddie comes to him with a pitch that every year the camp does an annual competition between the families, Tommy jumps at this chance to prove that his family is better. So they're assembled in for contests and each year they end up awarding a trophy to the family that wins the most of these contests. The Sanders family has won two years in a row and it's going for the third year. So Tommy's like, no, not on my watch. What's a family got to do to win? Oh, they gotta be in all the family competitions. They gotta compete. Family that takes home the most points at the end of the week takes the cup from my cold, dead hands. So the second day starts with a serenading tune of I don't care who you are, that's actually genuinely funny. But the competitions begin. You have archery, boating, you have bubble ball. This genuinely looks so fun. They seem to genuinely be having a fun time. Eddie's running around screaming something about his trophy wife. <laughs> that's my trophy wife! <laughs> okay. But uh, the competitions begin, and it gets to the point where it's neck to neck between the Ackermans and the Sanders, and they take the number one and number two slots. So in the middle of this competition, there comes a day where the camp does this dad hike event. Eddie and Tommy end up getting paired together. Well, they end up getting lost on the trail and stranded out in the middle of this huge forest and their families are frantic. So this is one of the parts of the story that was kind of hard for me to swallow is that it was supposed to be this scary element where they're stuck in the wild and they're actually genuinely in danger. I mean, Eddie gets stung by bees, almost dies. Rather awkward scene. Before you stab me. You need to massage my thigh. Mm, no. Nope. Do you want me to die? You well. have to massage my leg in the spot where you're gonna stab me in for at least 10 seconds or it does not work. And then he has a shot and all of a sudden magically, seconds later, he's perfectly normal. It's so weird. But uh, there's, there's supposed to be this dangerous thing where they're out in nature and stranded and their families at home are frantic. I mean, every shot of the family is them. They're like praying and, and, and pleading with the park rangers. Sometimes I like to pray in my prayer language. Is that all right? Um, you mean like in tongues? Like in Spanish. And then it switches to the two men out in the forest and they're fighting each other. They're getting into arguments. They're having quips and, and everything imaginable. What you gonna do now, little bald man? So it's hard to take it seriously if it was meant to actually be scary or frightening or dangerous, but it turns into a big character building element. They're bonding, spending some time together and learning about each other and just growing as men. They run into these two Bigfoot hunters who have a reality TV show. It's honestly, they're, they're probably my two favorite characters in the movie. They're, to me, genuinely funny. I liked them because they kind of served their purpose in the movie for exactly what they were created for. More comedic relief than anything else. And they're not trying to do anything else with them as characters. They're just meant for a good laugh. I know you guys. Yeah, yeah, you're on that, uh, you're on that TV show, the Bigfoot Hunters. Always nice to meet a fan. They end up almost stealing an ATV from the Bigfoot Hunter, which is kind of weird considering this is a Christian movie. The Bigfoot Hunters tie them up. They had some CGI beaver in this movie, which was interesting. The CGI wasn't actually bad. It was just, I didn't like the voice acting so much for the beaver, but it was, the beaver was honestly a very weird element to add to the movie. So he ends up freeing them. <laughs> yeah, it sounds so weird to be saying a CGI beaver saves them from being tied up from Bigfoot hunters. Yeah, that's basically in this movie in a nutshell. But the only thing that will save you is a CGI beaver. I'm sorry, you have a tough life. So anyway, they end up stealing this ATV from the Bigfoot hunters and driving off with it. And Eddie is literally like pulling a bow on these people, trying to blow up one of their ATVs. It's so bizarre. It's like, isn't this a Christian movie? What happened? What happened? <laughs> I'll never walk again! Sir, please don't go! No, you don't. L2! Oh. L4! Oh. And sleep! 
Betty, you're a murderer! No, Tommy. I'm a chiropractor. Tommy ends up finding that Eddie actually staged all of this. Yes, I'm not kidding. And the reason is, it gets even worse. The reason is because Eddie's marriage is falling apart. Yeah, I know they look perfect on the outside, but uh, his marriage is falling apart and he thinks that if he gets lost, his wife will get frantic. And when he comes back, she's gonna be head over heels for him all over again. It's bizarre. And Tommy is rightly put off with this guy. It just walks off on him and goes back to the campsite. Finally finds his way back, sees his wife and his kids. <laughs> I'm never leaving you again. So Eddie ends up coming back and that night is the final night of the camp. So Eddie ends up coming up and in front of everyone, he begins confessing his family's problems. It's so awkward. It's like he's telling everyone about how little he loves his wife and everything else. And you can imagine everyone just staring at his wife, how awkward that must be. So it's meant to be some happy ending, but to me it was just awkward. Telling the entire world, oh, I'm a horrible husband. I don't love my wife. I don't love my kids like I should. It, it's very awkward. But uh, Tommy ends up coming up, giving him a very awkward hug. It's supposed to be some happy ending. To me, it was very unsatisfying. And even at the end of the movie, we don't see any resolution to, throughout the movie, this business arrangement. This is one of the biggest parts of the movie. He's been trying to set up some business arrangement with a client. And we don't see if that business arrangement's ever gone through because he's competing with someone else who's trying to steal the client from him. And so we're left wondering what happens with that. And so it combines to, to really add for just a poorly structured story. It's still entertaining. There are definitely some moments I laugh. I care. Who consecrates a yurt with a harmonica song? I do! I do with pleasure! With pleasure! Well, it's not pleasurable to anyone else! Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's some genuinely funny parts of the movie, but I'm just disappointed because I know it could have been a lot better of, of a movie. Honestly, I feel like watching this movie, I've waited through two hours of content just to hear some message about fathers, cherish your wives and your families. You know, you could have told that to me in two minutes. I feel like I watched a lot of content that had absolutely nothing to do with that, just to hear that message. And, and then again, if you're orienting this movie towards men who need to cherish their wives and, and their families, then you're choosing a storytelling genre. Like you're, you're making this movie very slapstick in a way that most men are not going to enjoy. So it's like you're orient orienting it towards men, but it's not enjoyable for most men to watch. So it's kind of a weird element where they're trying to be something, but they're not fully investing themselves into that. There is also one part of the movie, they use the expression, Jeez Louise, which is a euphemism of the name of Jesus. Someone offhand comments, God only knows. Anyway, I'd love to hear what you guys think. Tell me what your thoughts are. Maybe you watched this movie and enjoyed it. If you did, tell me what you think. Hope you guys enjoyed this movie review. And with that, peace out.